Hi, I'm Amber Mack and welcome to The Algorithm. We have a great show for you today. We're gonna to talk about how AI researchers are predicting the World Cup. I know that's something on top of everyone's minds these days. We're also gonna talk about how data scientists are analyzing social media success and we'll learn about the internet of cows. I'll explain that a little bit later, but first, of course, artificial intelligence is such a broad term. So let's dive into our headlines. I wanted to share a video that's on YouTube from Qualcomm, which talks about artificial intelligence in 101 seconds. If you need to know a definition for artificial intelligence and you need an easy way to digest exactly what this term means in 2018, including terms like machine learning and many other subsets of artificial intelligence, such as deep learning, then this is a video that you need to watch to get a sense of how artificial intelligence works. And you'll be well equipped with these terms to be able to understand our future, whether that's the future of autonomous vehicles or any other top technology trends that we're seeing today because of the future of AI. I also wanted to talk about the future of healthcare. So I have been on the road over the past year talking about artificial intelligence. And one of the examples I always use is healthcare and what's happening in that industry today as far as being able to better understand data. And there's so many interesting things happening. As just one example, there are really weekly breakthroughs in the healthcare space, especially on the cancer front. Now, if a patient has, for example, a brain tumor, it can sometimes take up to two hours or more to complete a computer process that would detect small changes over time in the scan. Imagine that two hours, three hours, maybe four hours. However, this past week, MIT researchers shared how machine learning can help register brain scans up to 1,000 times faster. It's not hard to imagine how this can help to free up time in terms of doctor's time and also make the entire process that much more efficient. So some interesting and exciting news coming out of MIT. Now, I wanna switch gears a little bit and talk about what's happening in the beauty space with artificial intelligence. And this is a surprising one. Is artificial intelligence the secret to better skin? Turns out that Olay thinks so. They launched something called the Olay Skin Advisor, which is a tool that will give you a skin assessment in mere seconds that will analyze the age and quality of your skin. It does this by comparing your skin to thousands of other selfies that people have uploaded Along with a series of questions, it will then also recommend different skincare products that could help you. They have had this service or this tool for about two years in total, and more than three million people have used it so far. I just tried the tool out. I will not tell you how old it guessed I am, but I will say that it was within a couple of years of my actual age, so I was pretty impressed with that. And it's a really nifty way to figure out, again, the type of skin you may have, and also the recommendations engine was pretty interesting as far as the type of products that may help based on your very specific type of skin. So fun to see the beauty industry adopt some of these AI tools. Also, I know many of you are interested in the social media space and we're all trying to figure out how to maximize our reach and engagement across these different platforms. Now, one company that is doing a good job with data scientists is Viacom. They, of course, own brands such as Comedy Central and MTV and, of course, SpongeBob SquarePants. We're all familiar with this very popular brand that they've had for some time now. Uh, whether it's our kids watching it or adults watching it as well. Now they've done a lot online as far as different means. SpongeBob comes up all the time, time and time again. And the interesting thing is that the company is now using artificial intelligence to predict the success of its social media campaigns. In fact, it has a seven person data science team that helps to analyze and predict social media campaign success. As Digiday just shared, the company uses the technology to determine when to use influencers to drive content. The technology can tell within eight hours of a post publication whether it will perform well relative to the expected results. I'm very excited about this because I know today in the digital marketing space that so many of us are collecting data. We have an abundance of data, but we are really starving as far as knowledge and understanding of how to use that data and how to do a better job to see our community 
communities grow in the social space. Another thing that I'm really interested in is any type of innovation that's taking place on the east coast of Canada, where I'm from originally. And I was excited to see in the agriculture space that there's a new Brunswick company that is building a new system that will use artificial intelligence to help dairy farmers test milk and maximize profitability. At each station, there will be sensors collecting data from a cow about the milk and its protein, fat content, and other qualities. The company is called Soma Detect, and it's part of a growing trend of businesses that are focusing on something called the Internet of Cows. So also fascinating to see how IoT is entering into the farming space and how farmers are relying on that technology along with artificial intelligence to maximize their production as well as their profits. Now, as I mentioned off the top of the show, everyone has a World Cup fever. We've all been talking about the World Cup this week. And uh, if you do have World Cup fever, you will be interested in knowing how a group of European researchers is currently using AI to determine who will win this year's World Cup. Yeah, they're using machine learning and they've simulated 100,000 World Cups taking into account a number of different data points such as ranking method and more. On the top of the list, they predict that Spain will be the winner of the World Cup with a 17.8% chance of winning. Up next is Germany at 17.1% and Brazil is number three with a 12.3% chance of winning. So I'm sure lots of you will have uh, different ideas and predictions based on your own set of data and knowledge, but we'll see what happens when we find out who the winner is. Now, if you're interested in health and sports, you will love our tool to test. So every episode of the show, we're going to talk about a tool that you can try out. And this week, it's all about calories. There is an app out there that's available for iOS devices and Android devices. It's called Calorie Mama, and it's instant food recognition. All you do is snap a quick photo of your food, and you will get instant nutritional information. The database is just getting better and better all the time as far as how much information they have about nutrition based on different meals and it will really help you better manage what you're eating and understand what exactly it is that you are eating as well. Now, maybe if you are heading into the weekend or you are going out uh, to have a fancy meal, you don't want to know the calories, but for the most part, it is helpful to understand the nutritional intake side of things when it comes to eating your next meal. Now, to wrap the show up, I wanted to share a quote of the week that I also posted on Twitter. This is from Foreign Affairs. The marvels of modern technology are everywhere, but so far, all that has been invented are better toys. A true technological revolution would increase the overall productivity of the global economy, just as it did during the Industrial Revolution. I had quite a few people tweet back at me after I shared that on Twitter, and uh, I do agree that there are plenty of examples, whether it's in healthcare or in agriculture, how artificial intelligence is helping to do more than just make us more productive, but I still think we have a long way to go. And I, for one, am trying to expand beyond just simple toys and think more about the future of artificial intelligence in terms of how it can make the world a better place. Thank you so much for joining me on The Algorithm. I will see you soon. Now let's check in with some of the comments in the live feed to see what people have to say. All right, so uh, this is kind of the after show for the show, and uh, we are experimenting right now with this show, what it will look like. I'm just curious for people who are watching right now, I can see all the hearts coming in. Uh, please let me know if you watched over the past five or so minutes. We see something from Del and Ross. Thanks, Amber. And uh, I just wanted to check in with everyone and see what you thought about the format and the type of content as well. Uh, so we will be sharing this show across multiple social media platforms like YouTube and Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook. Facebook, uh, but uh, for the purposes of right now, just checking in on the uh, Twitter feed and in Periscope if you're watching. So let me know if you're watching and where you are watching from, and uh, I will follow along. So as I mentioned, this is really just a, a test as far as uh, figuring out the best format for the show. We are always experimenting with different formats and ideas and trying out different ser services. I think this is Steve who's saying hello. Uh, hi, Steve. Thanks for joining us. Chris is bringing up some of the uh, tweets as 
well from the show. That's another thing that we're going to try to do and get people to use the hashtag, the algorithm, and ensure that we have a live component uh, of this show as well. So we'll test it over, out over the next few weeks, and by the fall, we should have figured out a format that makes the most sense. I see that uh, the Optimus Prime just joined. That excites me uh, to no end because I was a big Transformers fan, and it seems like you have a little play on the uh, the name, of course. General Eaton said thought it was cool. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you enjoyed it, and always curious to see in terms of what we should do differently and how we should expand on both the format and the engagement side of things. So there was a point, uh, General Eaton is watching from California, where we wanted to do the show just live, but we recognize that there is an audience for that on-demand content, um, particularly on LinkedIn. So something we're trying to do is to record it live, then take the, the show piece of it, share it uh, afterwards across social platforms, but continue with the live format as well for people like all of you who love to do live as I do. I realize it's not for everyone, but it's a format that I have loved for a long time. And I know Chris likes it as well because it means uh, less editing. So uh, scroll for comments. We can see here, Chris, we, we have your little um, instructions on the interface that I can see on the feed as well. So that's kind of fun. And uh, we can see it's kind of a, a cool, engaging. AI seems like a stretch for those examples, except for the cow one. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that uh, like many people, people are just kind of experimenting a little bit with um, how they can incorporate things like machine learning. And the only way you're gonna figure out the full potential of how AI can change your business or complement your business is to start experimenting right now in some really simple ways. So it's good to see everyone from the beauty industry and beyond who is trying things out. Uh, this is Rick says, I used to watch you on Twit way back in the day. I love your work. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that journey. Twit was like two, two years ago. So, you know, it's uh, been a short journey. Not at all, not at all. Chris is laughing at me. Uh, so, uh, so lots of other comments coming in. It's fun to be able to see them on the screen. Glad you're, glad you're utilizing the live format. Thank you for saying that as well. And we will keep doing this live component. So we can think about it almost like the after show. You know, many people do kind of on-demand content um, and we will stick around to do the live portion as well. Uh, we have A1020 who is watching from Melville, Saskatchewan. Thank you for watching from Saskatchewan. Hopefully uh, life is treating you well. I think I'm out there in a few months for a speaking event. Uh, so looking forward to that. I believe, I'm not sure what city I'm in yet, but um, I will be figuring that pretty uh, soon. Uh, Chris has also just joined uh, the broadcast and uh, hopefully he'll say hello as well. And uh, lots of other comments and, um, and, and, and uh, feedback coming in. Uh, Dylan, obviously Dylan likes it. He's left us a couple comments already and uh, there are more coming in. So I'm going to wrap up the show for today and uh, you guys can keep sending in those comments. If you're sending me any messages on social media, you can just tag them with hashtag the algorithm. Uh, we may use them in an upcoming episode as well and would just love to get your feedback as we build this out. Kind of an interesting way, I guess, to build out a show, uh, which is to do it uh, from a grassroots level and involve everyone along the way. But that's something that uh, we really want to do here. And it will also help us with other projects that we're working on to understand what works best. And we get to do content that we love and we are all very excited to share. So uh, thank you for the comments coming in. And uh, thank you to Chris behind the camera, who is ever so patient with te testing out this new technology to let stream to multiple locations. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon on social media.